In this lesson, we'll talk about a concept that you're actually more likely to see in detail in your future MBA program and business endeavors than you are on the GMAT Focus Edition, but that can show up from time to time, and that's going to be the concept of interest. So let's first just define how interest works when it's simple. So simple interest is the percentage of interest that accrues over a defined interval of time. And your starting principle with simple interest never resets. So you can find the result from simple interest using the formula A is equal to P times the quantity 1 plus RT. So let's define the pieces here. So the amount that results is the A. The starting principle is going to be P. The R is going to be the interest rate. And then T is the interval at which the uh, amount is withdrawn, and we know that the one just indicates the original amount. So this is what you have after the interest accrues. So strategically, don't improperly reset the principle. If it's a simple interest problem, you just have to keep it as what well, as is at the beginning. You can manually calculate without the formula if you have any doubts about how to apply the formula or just fail to remember it in the moment. And you can, of course, consider alternative tax tactics to maximize efficiency with problem solving questions that involve interest. So let's take a look at an interest example. So how much would be in an, in an account that began with a principal of $800 after accruing 10% simple interest for two years? So our formulaic approach would be A is equal to P times that quantity 1 plus RT. So our A will then be set equal to 800 as the principal times 1 plus 0 0.1, the 10% as a decimal, times the two years that it accrues. So we end up with A is going to be equal to 800 times 1.2. And of course, if you work that through, you'd get 960 by doing 800 times 1.2, or you could do 80 times 12 if you just move around the decimals to make it potentially a little bit easier from a manual calculation approach. Now, our manual approach without the formula for interest is as follows. So you can take 10% of 800 for the interest after year one. So that's going to be 880. Then you take 10% of the 800, another $80 of interest after year two, because we did not reset the original principle. We add those two 80s to the 800, and we get the same 960. Now, it gets a little bit more complex when you have what is known as compounding interest. So it's going to be the percentage of interest that, accru that accrues over a defined interval of time. But this time, your principal value that is accruing interest will reset at a defined interval. So finding that amount resulting from the compound interest is going to be a slightly different and more complex formula. We've got A is going to be equal to P times the quantity 1 plus R, but this time that's raised to the T power. So A is still your amount that you end up with at the end of the interval from the compounding interest. P is once again your starting principle. The R once again is your interest rate, but T now is the number of intervals at which the amount compounds. So strategically, you do need to note the time interval of the accrual and the compounding. You can, again, potentially manually calculate compound interest to avoid a potentially onerous manual technical calculation because, remember, you will not have an ex a calculator at least on the quantitative section of the GMAT focus. And even the calculator that you get on the data insights section of the exam is probably not going to be all that intuitive to use when it comes to raising something to a power like this. You can, of course, consider alternative tactics once again to maximize efficiency as well. So let's take a look at a compound interest example. So how much would be in, the, in an account that began with a principal of $800 after accruing 10% interest compounding annually for two years? So formulaically, it's going to be that A equals P times the quantity 1 plus R raised to the T power. So we fill in the pieces. We know that A is going to be equal to 800 times the quantity 1 plus 0 0.1, the 10% as a decimal, but this time squared. So we end up with A is going to be equal to 800 times 1.21, because you do 1.1 squared is going to be equal to 1.21. Then you'd multiply that through and you'd get 968. Again, not the easiest manual calculation to execute, but if you can do it, go ahead and feel free to.
If you are not as comfortable with that formulaic approach, you usually can work a manual approach for compounding interest, just like we did with the simple interest. So you want to find your interest after year one first. So 10% of 800 is going to be 80. We then reset the principal for year two as $880. Then we take 10% of the new principal, 880, which if we just shift the decimal over one place is going to be $88 as the interest after year two. We then add that to our 880 that we had after year one to find 800 plus 80, 880 plus 88 is going to be 968. So let's go ahead and move over to the whiteboard and take a look at how we can execute with interest problems, potentially with a logical or alternative tactic, as opposed to being subjected to these relatively onerous manual calculations, especially with that compound interest formula, if you have no calculator, as you will not on the quantitative reasoning section of the GMAT focus. So. Let's take a look at a sample problem solving question. And as always, we'll set up the scratch pad first. So we've got A, B, C, D, E. We put a little line over top and we are being asked, and it's kind of phrased actually so that we have to start at the beginning. How much did LaRonda initially invest in a money market account? So I'm actually going to stop there and take note of what we're being asked for first. So we're looking for the starting principle, as it were. And we've got real numbers, so I might write them out. We've got 44,000, and I could just shorthand that as K, 48K, 52K, 54K, and 58K. So now we learn that Miranda initially invested some amount of money, and after two years, so after two years of 15%, interest and we compound annually we've got a total amount that would be equal to $63,480 now you may be recalling the technical approach and we know that our a is going to be equal to our principal times that one plus the R time or raised to the T in this case. So what's tricky about this though is once we start filling the pieces, we've got 63,480 is going to be equal to whatever my P is, and that's what we're ultimately solving for, times one plus R is a percentage, so that's going to be 1.15 squared. And you may be thinking to yourself, I don't really want to like square 1.15 and then divide it by that to find what P is. That's kind of owner's calculation. So at this point, remember that if you find that the algebra ceases to be simple and apparent in the moment, you might just go, okay, there's got to be a better way to do this. So I can start eyeballing my answer choices. So this is going to be our logical evaluation alternative because we know that we've got answer choices that are going up in order and we see that we've got that phrase how much so this also can tie into some possible back solving so in this case we want to just kind of estimate what's happening with our starting principles. And we've basically got a range from 45,000-ish to 58,000-ish. And we know that 10% of 50 is going to be equal to 500. And then that's going to be at least times two. So if we're looking at 10% of 54, well, that's going to be equal to 1,080. And in terms of 54,000, that is 50K, 54th K. And so if we added 1,080 to 54,000, we hopefully can immediately determine that both of these answer choices are going to be over. And just 10% simple interest. And so once we find that estimation, we can just manually calculate our our uh, interest 
from year to year, knowing that it's not that hard to solve for 15%. So we're going to have 10% plus 5%, and that's going to be the year one interest, as it were. So we start with 48,000, knowing that 54 and 58, for the reason that we just articulated, is going to be too high. So 48,000, we know that 10% is going to be 4,800 plus the half of that, which is going to be 2,400. And so that's going to give us a total of, well, it'd be 7,200 on top of the 48,000. So that means that my new year two principal is going to be 48,000 plus 7,200, which is going to give me 55,200. So now we just got to take another 10% and 5%. So 10% is going to be 5520. And then half of that is going to be equal to, it's going to be 27 and 60. And we go, oh, okay, if I just add this up, I can see I'm already getting to the 80 here. And sure enough, if we added it fully up, we'd get our 63,480 target at our back solving point using choice B. So recognize that interest problems do often lend themselves to alternative tactics if you don't want to do some onerous calculation, as you saw with the P times one plus R to the T power that we had. But of course, if you're comfortable with that technical math, remember that the technical approach is probably the most efficient and expedient if you can execute it. So go ahead and practice some interest problems on your own to improve at what is ultimately not all that frequently tested on the exam, but can be fodder for some of the harder questions on the problem-solving quantitative reasoning section of the GMAT Focus.